Huey P. Long burst on the political scene in the late 19 teens. He was elected to the Railroad Commission, the precursor to the Public Service Commission. He ran for governor unsuccessfully in 1924, but came back with a vengeance and won in 1928. From the moment of his election, Louisiana no longer had Republicans and Democrats, blacks and whites, northerners and southerners, rich and poor. We had longs and anti-longs. You were with him or you were against him. You were rewarded or you were punished. We say to America, 125 million. Two years later, he was elected to the United States Senate, but didn't take the oath of office until 1932. None shall work too much. During that time frame, his letter had literally said, Huey P. Long, governor and senator-elect. In an early special session of the legislature that he called, a representative who had the audacity to oppose him threw a copy of the state constitution at him. Huey, have you read this? Huey looked at it, tossed it aside, and said, from now on, I am the Constitution. And that's the way things went for about a year. 8,000 miles of roads were paved in Louisiana. Dozens of bridges began construction. Most still bear his name. And free textbooks for every child in Louisiana. Before Huey, if you wanted your children educated, you had to buy their textbooks. They're not going to have New Orleans near Louisiana, run by the thieves, the vandals, and the criminals. Huey Long did more good and more harm than any governor in United States history. He completely dominated the state legislature. He gerrymandered his opponents out of office. He made the legislature pass bills that he rattled off the top of his head that increased his power, destroyed its enemies, and stretched constitutionalism. 23 of his immediate family members were on the state payroll, and he was deducting 10% from the paychecks of all state employees to aid his political supporters. He explained it by saying, we make them pay it voluntarily. The House of Representatives considered 19 charges of impeachment. Nine were referred to the Senate. Huey Long was not impeached, but he was so soured on that experience that he decided right then that Louisiana needed a new state capital. There was nothing wrong with the old state capital, but in 1932, the new state capital was built. It stands 34 stories high. It was and still is the tallest state capital in America. It's also the tallest tombstone because Huey is buried right there in the front lawn overlooking the actions of every governor and legislator since. One cannot underestimate the venom and rancor that existed in Louisiana during the Huey Long era. Quite an honor for Mr. Harry Link to come Huey authored two books, including his autobiography, Every Man a King, which was also his campaign theme song. I want you to play it over for these people. And if you like it, I want you to put it out. Good. of the Louisiana State Capitol are overflowing with 100,000 people here to attend the funeral of Senator Huey Long, an assassin's victim at 42. When it's sunny June, Huey's second book was published months after his death and presumptuously entitled, My First Days in the White House. Huey is assassinated in 1935. He's a United States Senator at the time, but he's still running Louisiana politics. Yeah. Would he have run for president in 1936? Sure. But once somebody, understand that, once somebody wants to be president, they always do. No one's, that, that's just the itch that don't go away without a scratch. Coming on the heels of the Depression, I mean, history could have really been changed if he'd have been in that race against FDR. The long legacy lasted for 72 years. From 1948 to 2020, a long family member has served in state or federal elective office.